five fans see out of my fights of friends everybody please hit that like button make sure you hit that subscribe button double tap that notification bell if you like everything fighting martial arts boxing we do just about every UFC we do a live fight reaction with our community this Saturday we're going to be doing the Gervonta Davis fight um, Today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be ranking Bruce Lee's martial arts movies, all five official movies, from worst to first. And when Bruce Lee died, it left a hole in the martial arts community like nothing we've seen since then. There had never been a figure as big as Bruce Lee. Talk about larger than life. This guy was doing things that no one had ever seen and there has not been as big of martial arts star since. He left such a gigantic hole. Let's start out with what's considered uh, his worst movie and uh, one of the big reasons it's considered his worst movie I would say is he's only in about 39 minutes of this movie. Um, in this movie, Bruce Lee plays Billy Lo, a Hong Kong action superstar who is being coerced by threat of violence to sign with a management firm uh, that's ran by a crime syndicate. Uh, Billy knows he's going to be controlled by this mob if he signs. Um, so in what millions would wonder if it was actually a foreshadowing for his real life, it, he fakes his death in the movie. Uh, alters his appearance, and he attacks this mafia one person at a time. So old school revenge movie, you know, before John Wick, uh, before all the, uh, you know, Liam Neeson uh, movies, it was Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee must climb five floors in a tower, and on each tower, he has to face a practitioner of a different martial art uh, on each floor of the tower until he gets to the very top and uh, that's where he has to fight Hakeem Mantis uh, who is played by seven foot NBA superstar Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Now Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for those that don't know actually did train martial arts with Bruce Lee and you can see in this little clip we're looping here is uh, you know, everybody says Marco Huas was the king of the foot stomp. That he, like he invented it in MMA. Well, you see Bruce Lee working on the foot stomp here before that nice little uppercut. Uh, so it, this was left as a choppy, unfinished movie. Like I mentioned, only 39 minutes of the movie had Bruce Lee in it. Um, at several points, the director shamelessly posts a still picture of Bruce Lee's face in place of the stand uh, in actor. Uh, this movie had a budget of $850,000. It would salvage $43 million worldwide, although it was not well received. A lot of people went to see it, of course, just because of the name, uh, be, because of Bruce Lee. But you know, outside of the 39 minutes that Bruce Lee's in, some great fight scenes. Um, you know, the rest of the movie it didn't end up being real great. Uh, you can rent it starting at $2.99 on Vudu. I think it's $3.99 uh, on Amazon Prime. Or you can watch it for free on Daily Motion. And I'll leave the link in the description to that if you want to watch this for free tonight over on Daily Motion. I still think it's worth a watch because, you know, you're going to see some incredible fight scenes with Bruce Lee, some incredible nunchuck work, and then that great fight um, that was shown there with uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, next up, number four is going to be The Big Boss. Uh, now, bad camera work and a makeshift plot uh, where Bruce works in an ice shop that turns out to be an undercover drug smuggling operation, uh, you know, kind of overshadows this movie a little bit. You can see Bruce's first independent fight choreography and, and his action had explosiveness not seen before in action movies. Uh, it, even though, like I said, not the greatest camera work, uh, the plot's not incredible. It, it's definitely worth a watch, in my opinion. You're not going to win any girlfriends with the plot watching this, but 
Um, you know, it's definitely a, a great guy flick if you just want to watch some great martial arts and some some great Bruce Lee. He was a one man show, and this was really the start of his Hong Kong takeover, filmed over in Hong Kong. You can watch it for free tonight on Tubi TV, and I recommend to watch it. I've probably seen this movie 20 times, guys. Um, next up is going to be The Chinese Connection, also known as Fists of Fury. Um, it was produced by Raymond Chow, who was one of the biggest producer of these martial arts movies in the 70s. Uh, much better production, much better lighting, film quality. Uh, Bruce is really able to open up as the leading man of a true Hong Kong blockbuster. This is set in the 1910s where Bruce Lee plays Chen Zen, a martial arts student who returns home to avenge the death of his master and fight the oppression being placed on the Chinese people at the time. Uh, based on a true story, actually. Uh, more distinguished movements, some special effects, although crude by today's standard, and, and several iconic fight scenes, including an epic showdown with an evil anti-hero. The movie was a huge success, making over $100 million on just a $100,000 budget. It was the highest grossing film in the history of Hong Kong at the time. Um, at the time of this video, you can watch this on Amazon Prime. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you can watch that on Amazon Prime for free, guys. Um, so that record would not stand for long, though, the $100 million, because next would come Return of the Dragon and uh, American kickboxing world champion Chuck Norris would enter the forte. Um this was Chuck's screen role debut. I don't know if a lot of people know that. You see nicely Pone Serenagi there from Chuck. And Chuck was a true martial artist. Of course, as we mentioned, uh, American kickboxing champion. Six-time world champion. Uh, by the way, Bruce shows off his nunchuck skills in this picture, which is based in Rome. Uh, in the movie, 100% directed by Bruce. Uh, he plays Tong Lung, the nephew of a restaurant owner who is being coerced by gangsters to hand over his shop or face dire consequences. After several assassination attempts, this gang hires Colt, who's played by Chuck Norris, to dispose of Tong Lung. What ensues is a legendary battle in the Roman Colosseum with Chuck Norris. Bruce would break his own Hong Kong record, raking in $130 million worldwide, or about $650 million adjusted for inflation, guys. Martial arts movies don't do that today. The $130, that's, that's 70s movies money. That's $650 million uh, in today's movies. Of course, that's a couple of years ago. This is 2023, actually, first day of 2023, so it's... You know, maybe over a billion dollars in today's um, money now with the inflation we faced the last couple of years. Uh, it's available for rental on Amazon and YouTube for $2.99. Uh, but as of this recording, you can watch it on Daily Motion. Uh, as I mentioned before with uh, the other movie, and I will leave a link in the description so you can watch uh, that movie on Daily Motion. That is the number two all-time movie for Bruce Lee. So, of course, number one was the epic Enter the Dragon. Maybe the greatest martial arts movie of all time. Um, I believe it's my favorite. The first time I seen this, I watched it with my friend Ben. Uh, ben, if you happen to watch this, you'll know we watched this five times in a row. We stayed up all night. It was the most amazing thing. Uh, I think I had seen in my entire life at that point. I was 10 or 11 years old. Um, this was a movie that Bruce Lee always dreamed of making. This was his uh, symphony of martial arts. It's directed by Robert Klaus, who brought Lee back to the U.S. after a, a several-year hiatus. Uh, Bruce would be working with Warner Brothers. He finally got the Hollywood respect he longed for. Uh, and creative freedom to boot. 
Bruce would have the most input of anyone on the set. The script and fight choreography is all his. It's all a masterpiece, guys, including the open scene. Uh, you're going to see uh, him put on an arm bar, and he's wearing gloves that look very, very similar to today's MMA gloves. A lot of people think that... Um, Today's MMA gloves are based on Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do gloves. I happen to think that's probably a pretty good possibility because as far as I know, nobody had ever seen anything like that before they showed up uh, in this movie. Uh, so Bruce's legendary mirror match is with the super villain Han. Han is a reclusive billionaire who holds a tournament of the best fighters every three years on his private island. A lot of people also said that this was the idea uh, that made the Ultimate Fighter. And when the Ultimate Fighter came out in 2005, I thought, wow, we have a real life Enter the Dragon where you're going to take the best fighters in the world, you're going to put them in a the house, they're going to fight each other. This is going to be incredible. And of course it was. Uh, Forrest Griffin, Stephen Bonner in that finale. Um, rest in peace, uh, Stephen Bonner, who passed away just about a week ago, is of the making of this movie. Um, uh, in this movie, though, Han is a former member of the Shaolin Temple. He turned renegade years before this movie is based. He uses the tournament as a cover for his opiate ring and sex trafficking businesses. Lee is sent in, up in undercover to bust it up. Incredible performances by the late John Saxon playing Roper, a ladies man and hustler wannabe. R.I.P. John Saxon. He passed away July 25th of 2020. Also, the late Jim Kelly plays a war veteran and kung fu expert, Roper's great friend, Bolo Young. You'll recognize him also from Bloodsport, an absolute legend. And, uh, he plays a great role in this movie, too. Um, and then the final showdown between Bruce and Han uh, with 8,000 mirrors, guys. And the effect was so disorientating, actors could only spend about 15 minutes at once in the room before becoming sick the result would pay off for all involved though and bruce lee's opus would make over 350 million dollars that's well over a billion dollars adjusted for inflation a day and way more uh, than any other martial arts movie has ever made um all except for its main star, Lee would die 29 days before the theatrical release. That's what was so horrible about this. You can rent it now though for $3.99 on Amazon. I suggest buying it though. You can buy the HD version of it for $12.99 on Amazon. Because you're going to want to watch this more than once, guys. I, I mean, I don't know how many times I've seen this movie in my life, but probably over 50 and after making this video, oh, I might watch it again tonight. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. This is Bruce Lee's martial arts movies from worst to first. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, go down there in the comments. Share your memories of Bruce Lee growing up. What was the first martial arts movie that you've seen? What was the first Bruce Lee movie that you've seen? Who was it inspired you to get into martial arts or to watch MMA? Was it Bruce Lee? Was it Anderson Silva? Was it some of today's greatest MMA stars who no doubt took inspiration uh, from Bruce Lee? And without Bruce Lee, we probably would not have mixed martial arts in the UFC today. Uh, guys, as always, I love you. I respect you. And I'll see your fine asses next time.